Hey everyone, I am 27 female and I recently got married. During my wedding, I did something which is now causing a rift between me and my husband. Any advice would be highly appreciated. My husband and I have been together since we were 22. We met during our university classes and we just hit it off. Things have been going smoothly between us, like I cannot complain about our relationship, but the one thing I can complain about, and I will, is his mother and sister. His mother is obsessed with him, like the attachment style is not healthy at all. Based on whatever I have learned about his relationship with her since he was a child, his mother did not want him to have any breathing space at all. She had a tracker on him all the time. Him having a relationship when he was young was not acceptable in her eyes at all because no way any girl would treat her baby right. Or that was the way she thought about the whole thing. Everything that he said made me feel bad for him because he deserved better. When we started dating, he did not want to tell his family, especially his mom, about me because he knew that she was not going to react kindly to him dating at all. Hearing his words made me feel insecure at first because I was not sure if he was saying it like it was reality, like he truly had a dysfunctional family or if he was saying it as he simply did not want anyone to know about me. But I trusted him despite my insecurities. Things took a turn for the worse when his sister found us living together. His sister is three years older than him and is just as possessive about him as his mother is. In her eyes, her brother is the next calling of God, is superhuman and deserves to be treated that way. While there is nothing wrong with thinking highly of our sibling, it was creepy how she was aggressive towards me. She did not even hide that she did not like me dating him. She was very blatant and open about her disregard and hatred towards me. While I found it surprising, I tried to not let it ruin the love that I had for my partner because he truly made me happy. Since she learned about me, my husband was forced to let his mother know about me and that was a nightmare. She demanded we meet ASAP and when we did, she did everything that she could to judge me. In her eyes, I was nothing because I came from a lower financial status. In her eyes, I was a gold digger who manipulated her son into dating her. It was strange hearing her say those words to me, and whenever she said those, I sort of expected my husband to say something about it, but he just never did. He was always quiet and let her go off on me. Whoever brought it up later, he told me that I just have to get used to it because he does not have a choice. There was not much he could do to make sure they did not say those words to me because if he said anything to me, they would go off on him and he was not willing to take that. He told me that eventually they will get sued by me and it will all be over when they realize that I am the one he wants to be with. I won't lie, hearing him say those words to me brought me some comfort, even though what he said was quite a big red flag. I felt like we could get over it eventually. I have heard that it is hard for people to accept that their kid is dating someone, and given how toxic her attachment was towards my husband, the way mother-in-law was behaving was understandable. So I kind of knew what I was signing up for. However... Things got worse the more our relationship developed and by the time my husband proposed to me, my mother-in-law made it very obvious that she did not like me and the only reason she was tolerating me was because of my husband. While I hated the feeling of that, I still wanted to make him happy and I was agreeable to everything that we did. Eventually, the whole wedding planning was hijacked by my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was deciding everything about the wedding, starting from the decor to the wedding guest list. She even went as far as to try and push my parents out of the wedding guest list as a whole. It was a whole different drama, but you know what? I still went with it. I did my best to be agreeable with her, to come and meet her at a middle point. 
I did not mind her doing everything as long as she was not pushing each and every limit of mine because having her involved with the whole wedding made my husband happy. But everything made me angry when I found out what she had been doing with my sister-in-law. Essentially, they boycotted me from the whole planning part of my whole wedding. But on top of that, they were constantly bickering about me. They were criticizing me and making comments on how bad of a wife I would be. I overheard them having this conversation by chance, and it irritated me to no end. I realized this was absolutely not acceptable because I was doing my best to solve and adjust everything with people, and yet here they were, still insulting me behind my back. After that, I made sure to get my revenge. My revenge was essentially collecting all the dirt that I could find on my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. I probably should not have done that, but I really did not want to feel used like this anymore. I went as far as to get a private investigator for this because I was that invested in the whole revenge and you would not believe the dirt I found on them. Turns out, my sister-in-law has been cheating on her husband for the past three months with at least four men. Not only that, my mother-in-law, the perfect goody, has been embezzling money from her husband's company. My husband's father and mother-in-law separated when he was two years old and they have no relation, hence mother-in-law's husband. Anyway, I was not expecting so much dirt. Was I happy that I found so much dirt on them? Yes. Do I think I went a little overboard? Also yes. But by that time, I wanted to make sure I got my revenge, so I decided to go through with the whole plan. I got all the details that the private investigator could give me and prepared a whole thing for me because I knew they would do something during my wedding and I was right. When the wedding was done, it was the reception and mother-in-law and sister-in-law decided that they would talk about our wedding and how they felt about it. I knew something was off straight away because I still let them get on the mic and start talking and oh my god, the things they said pissed me off. They essentially started painting me as this completely careless person who does not care about my husband at all and did not care about the wedding either, which is not true. It pissed me off so much. They kept going, smiling and chatting away about how I had ruined their relationship with my husband and everything. Before that speech, I was reconsidering if I wanted to go through with the revenge because the wedding was so beautiful and everything was so perfect. But the moment they said all of those things, I got angry and I decided to go through with it. I took the mic after them and said that since we are sharing the hard truth about the wedding... I might as well provide some more truths at the same time. With that, I went off on both of them, mentioning each of their dirt. They were flabbergasted at first because how could I say those things to them? And then they were upset with me for even bringing things up, but I felt no regret. Obviously, the wedding ended up being a bit more dramatic than I had imagined, but I felt like I did the right thing. But since then... My husband has been giving me the cold shoulder. He thinks that whatever I did was a very low blow. I do not think it was a low blow, but what do you guys think? Was I petty or not? Update 1 Since a lot of you asked, and I am sorry for not giving the details in the initial post, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law planned out the wedding in the backyard of mother-in-law's place. They believed that it was better to do the work in the open space and feel the sun while they worked. That day, I had showed up a bit earlier than expected and mother-in-law's husband, who runs his own apparel company, was home. He let me in and I made my way to the backyard. Their back was facing the door, so they did not know that I was there and that was when I heard them say all the things that they thought about me. They were discussing how I am a gold digger and how they're sure that I'm one for sure with how I have been showing my interest in certain things and the aesthetics of the wedding. Mother-in-law commented on how I'm probably going to have other men on the side because I am probably that desperate and sister-in-law agreed. She said 
how she had seen me giving looks to her husband, which is not even remotely true. And yeah, in their eyes, I was worse than a gold digger and my husband would be better off cheating on me than being loyal to me. So yeah, now you know. Update two. I hear whatever you guys are saying. I'm picking up whatever you're putting down and I think you guys are right. I may have gone a bit overboard, but the way my husband has done nothing to protect me against their accusations kind of left me with no choice at all. So I suppose that makes it even. I do not know. As much as I would love to think about it, I am trying not to because the more I think about it, the more upset I get. But yes, I will talk to my husband about the whole situation as he is not aware of this specific conversation. Update 3. My husband and I had that conversation and, well, it went surprisingly well. This time around, he did not brush me off. He asked me again and again of what I heard was true and if I'm confident that they were saying things like this about me. I said that it is true and my husband decided to confront them. I was not expecting him to do that, but I was happy to see him confront them for once. Since the wedding, mother-in-law and sister-in-law have been living together as mother-in-law's husband decided to live away from her to figure out whether he wants to spend the rest of his life with her. And sister-in-law's husband had already filed for divorce. At first, they tried to deny the allegations because why wouldn't they? But when my husband pressed them, they admitted to it. This was happening over a call, and I heard everything. Mother-in-law especially insisted that my husband find someone better because he deserves so much better than me, and I need to not be in his life. My husband listens to whatever they had to say and inform them that he is not going to divorce me or cheat on me. He made it clear that he loves me and he is planning on being with me for a long time. If they cannot respect his wishes, he expects them to limit their contact with us. Hearing him stand up for me made me feel loved by him, which was something I was struggling to feel over the last four months. He has apologized to me for not paying heed to this situation when he should have, and I have forgiven him. So this is where we stand right now. I see this as a win. Be petty, OP. They deserved it. You did nothing wrong. With those heavy allegations, I can see why you went the extra mile to hire a private investigator and make sure they got screwed over the way you did. I do not think you are an a-hole at all. Next story. I, female, 24, have known my mom's friend, Jane, female, 60, and Joe, male, 66, since I was a kid. Recently, they began to comment that I have never had a boyfriend. To start, Jane said a local shop is hiring and I should apply because it would be a great place to meet boys. I said thanks, but I'm not looking for a boyfriend. Joe then started saying how I should try to find someone soon before it's too late. I tried to joke it off, saying I don't need a man, and a boyfriend sounded like work. After they left, I told my parents that I didn't like those comments, and they made me uncomfortable. My parents agreed it was strange, but said I shouldn't overthink it. They came over again and pushed the discussion of relationships and how I should find a boyfriend. I tried to make a joke, saying I was asked out, but turned it down. My parents seemed surprised, so I told a story about how two different guys asked me out, but I turned them down because they made me uncomfortable. Jane said I should at least go on a date with them because I don't know when I'll be asked again. I became angry and told them I would rather be single than date someone who made me feel uncomfortable. Joe disagreed, saying it didn't matter, I should have taken the offers. I mentioned again to my parents how uncomfortable I was with these comments, but again I was told to ignore them. I asked my parents to tell them to stop making comments about my relationships. I saw them again last week. My parents pulled them aside and told them to stop making those comments as they made me uncomfortable. They agreed to stop. Later, Joe asked me a question and when I didn't give him the response he wanted, he said he'd ask about my boyfriend later to 
set me back to normal because it's so funny. After, Joe told everyone not to ask about any boyfriend because they wouldn't want me to get upset again. When Jane and Joe were leaving, they made a comment about me being alone for the rest of my life. The final straw was tonight. My parents had a party and Jane and Joe came. My parents agreed to remind them of my boundary and that I could leave if needed. The jokes continued. Jane said how sad my life must be and how I will die alone. I started to leave when Joe said Jane was right and it was almost pathetic that I didn't have a boyfriend yet. I was tired of them disrespecting my boundaries, so I turned to Joe and very loudly said, I think I finally understand why you and Jane keep bringing up my relationship status. It's because you're interested in me. That must be why you keep disrespecting my boundaries. Well, let me be clear. I am not interested in you. And frankly, it's creepy. You've known me since I was a child. I left after that. From what I've been told, they were embarrassed and left the party early. My best friend thinks I'm right, but my parents believe what I said was uncalled for and disturbing. What they said makes me feel disrespected, but maybe I was too harsh, so am I the a-hole? NTA. Why are your parents okay with their friends bullying you? Those people would never be allowed in my life again if they disrespected my child that way. NTA. Normally, something like that would be out of line, but they were told over and over not to make comments like that. How they made you uncomfortable and, frankly, your dating life is none of their business. You had to resort to drastic measures to make them stop. And under the circumstances, I don't blame you at all. Maybe now they'll stop sticking their noses into your business and making you uncomfortable. Next story. I, 20, female, am the youngest sister to my brother, 22, male, and I currently live with him and my mother, 54, female, in a two-bedroom apartment due to some really unfortunate life circumstances that I'm not going to entirely delve into here. Rent is evenly split between all of us. My brother may be autistic, but I also believe he is a lazy a-hole who weaponizes his incompetence to a high level. He's held three jobs in his life, been fired from two, still chews with his mouth open, and insists he can't put away the dishes because he doesn't know where they go, despite us living here for almost two years. For some context, my older brother was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome when he was 11 years old due to our school having a psychologist follow him around for three months due to behavioral and grade issues. This obviously leads to some different treatment from my mother towards the two of us, with me being expected to basically act the role of an older sibling. Defend your brother from bullies if you see it at school. Allow him to hang out with you and your friends because he has struggles and always make allowances for the things he doesn't do, like his laundry and any chores whatsoever. I accepted the responsibility, did my best to be a good sister despite my frustrations, my own struggles, and how he made so many of my friends uncomfortable that they refused to come over to my house. I did it all because... Well, he has autism, so he sees the world differently. So imagine my shock at 18 when I get diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. My mom insists the doctors are wrong, a shocker to none, because you've always been better at socializing than your brother, as if I was ever given the option to avoid it like him. He never would show up to family holiday events. They didn't make him. But if I tried to skip out, I'd be dragged kicking and screaming. And maybe it's because all of these revelations have been rolling in my head for the last two years. But in an argument last week with my mother, when she was insisting I do my brother's laundry since I was already doing a small load of my own at the laundromat, when I snapped and told her, I hope you know that when you're gone, there will be no one to do his laundry and pay his rent when he gets fired again. 
She is mad at me because he's family, but I don't really get it. I've had to learn to live with my autism, find my own resources and do it mostly without support from either of them, and I don't want to accept a future drain on what I've worked so hard for. AITA? Edit. So um, this is just because I feel a little bad with how much my mom's getting it in the replies, though you all are lovely. My mom was a victim for the majority of my young childhood life by my alcoholic father, who she kicked out when I was 12. Two months later, she was diagnosed with cancer and would fight it off and on for the next four to five years before having a sudden cardiac arrest when I was 18 years old. While I do still hold her responsible for her direct actions, I hope this can help explain why the parentification happened. She didn't just want to neglect her kids. NTA, and yes, it needed to be said. He needs to learn to cope or get a proper diagnosis and treatment. And if it's actually bad enough, he might need a part-time carer. That's something that needs dealing with before your mom passes. That could be decades from now, or she could get in an accident next week. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.